find Zane and quickly collapse onto him. Wow. So a very neutral start, in my opinion, for both of these teams, right? A first pick CC doesn't really give away too much. Um, the same thing with BTK, right? Uh, the export against CC, a matchup that we've seen pretty much numerous of times, is something that's not out of the ordinary. Nicolette early Valentina pick. It definitely feels like we have a rise of a early game Valentina in the draft. It's not something that has been significantly prioed, um, but you know, especially in our upper brackets, it seems like a lot of. Oh, that's not working, bro. Really like it should start by now. But the Brass Brass comes out paired up with the Novaria. Decided BTK could opt to. Finally, it's working. I don't know what the fuck happened to the other stream, bro. So fucking weird. What just happens? Especially since they're probably banning out the Boxia, the the Akai, or pick something up for Moba Zane. Let Cold World get a a better opportunity, especially in the last pick, because BTK they do have the last pick available. Last pick roam is definitely something uh, a very good strategy that people like. Yes, Moba Zane picks up the Akai, so no jungle denies. Decided BTK. Hello everyone. A marksman and a roam. I don't I don't know what happened the second ago. You know, fucking weird ass thing where my stream wasn't working. I don't know why, but here we are. I thought this would be interesting to watch party. I'm expecting either a Roger or a Harry. I thought it'd be interesting. Here to, to either compliment with what they're going to be taking or the counter to one of those as well out here. Basic has actually been very good. He's, uh, I want to say from the player. Oh. Love it. Love <laughs> it's, it. It's not every day. I mean, we've talked about this before. Um, I'm more of a fan of the Hanabi when there's an Angela on the team, just because I felt like that is a combination that is just nigh unkillable with the heart guard combination shield plus the, the, the oasis i'm not a huge fan of her without that just because uh, prediction I, mean, win. I don't know who's gonna win honestly i don't know on a level that makes her i don't know viable. that's why i wanted to watch the series i thought i was gonna watch the series anyway like off stream so i thought i might as well watch party it if i'm gonna watch it because i don't know who's gonna win so i mean a, a good call out by them but like i, I feel like we're kind of ignoring the, the bigger problems uh for the whole of the meta which is that that roger pick that could possibly be coming out here now i'm gonna go on with my praying strategy once again things like masha and natan should be coming out quite early in the draft especially since things like the akai the export even audio low the valentina doesn't get banned out too often. well i don't want the stream audio to be that loud because i don't really care to hear it if i'm going to be honest Zane loves to have but you know to be able to oh okay never mind. i'm gonna take it back <laughs> probably doesn't i go no bro i'm just doing uh, okay. this right away all right drafts um i don't really like the ace draft right now i think it's weird but we'll see da can win if they snowball early game i don't like this i was a little confused with the the florin ban out there i feel like that uh that's a, a very tiny blip in a very large pool that cold world has shown us oh free our uh, interesting btk um oh, our rome. Being, okay i mean that's a pretty dominant wait um so that's gonna be in our lot rome, rome i presume well, as of right now i think bdk draft is better and then we're just waiting for that uh marksman pickup by them do we go with the roger to be countered by the harith <laughs> No, we're gonna go Ixia. with the Ixia. <laughs> yeah, it gets Ixia's pretty good. Now, just to shine a little bit of light on this foreign pick, um, the bloom that comes. Uh, from I think late game, BTK would just win. His export is just gonna ruin Barats and CC. Right. And you have a Kai peel, but DA can win only if they snowball the early game. And you have Arlot, which is a very strong early game hero. So there's a chance. Let's see what the road pick is for PTK. Like the Matilda and Angela's um, they meant Matilda. There is like so many roam bands. Flora and Raph, Angela, Minnow, Matilda. That's like five roam bands here. Very, very high mechanical so he has to go like a set tank. He, he can do pretty much everything when it comes down to no short stream. Oh, I, I just didn't want to open the short stream. Oh, I could turn on the bot though. I didn't want to do the short stream because I, no, I didn't really want to configure it. I don't I didn't want to bother setting up the setup, the layout, you know. I don't want to bother. Uh, especially to deal with a lot of the CC and the, the, the no oh. is coming out from Melon. So, you know, BTK with a pretty strong draft. DA, of course, a strong draft themselves too. But we will have to see how these two teams face up in the very first match of the series. 
yeah my uh i'm guess i'm kind of wondering i mean we've got the back line dive bot is on bot is on so mm. you're gonna have Why to hit carry careful if you're melon we've seen him i don't think carry's that great here star for devious carry's not that and, great uh, pretty much i want to say the mvp for like the last versus um you ever thought you were cut you out pretty hard her range is much longer than yours and she's much faster it's not really great versus borg because he has two hp bars so it doesn't really shred as well as it does again normal hero i think ixia is fine i like ixia plus, plus ixia and avaria is a really really strong combo what am i eating um it's like some some salmon noodles I like veggies we have two teams very very proficient on we typically call the strategy the front to back type of strategy right okay Where see how this goes seems like mid prize is definitely going to go over to btk with the valentino grok they can't really freeze though i feel like it's kind of a waste of time to freeze they should just shove and try and like get pressure somewhere else although actually they are kind of successfully freezing here and he's getting it he's getting it Ball's doing some damage yeah i feel like this is kind of a waste of time to freeze this for btk side penetrate each other now because once in a is too you can never freeze her because she just insta clears the wave the roamers joy bosh with uh the quantum shards coming out from quok so lots of utility quok so early on some trades and auto quok so and therefore who's quok so mobility but in terms of the emblems besides the quantum charge on the r lot and the bodge isn't a great r lot though standard so we'll see how well he does, but like I have not seen him do too well in our lot. Like this composition, a very interesting our lot player. With the emblems is like it's all about penetration, like just pushing through. Pushing to get a stack spike up, man. Just clear and rotate top. And you sit in the bush for. Being able to close the distance, especially on heroes like Yato, who likes to really stay very far, poke out with a lot of those little sniping abilities. So it's gonna be very interesting to see if devious activity is gonna be able to set up. Oh, Kush isn't gonna go into top game. He's just gonna stay around. Side. He's gonna run out of stacks. Uh, oh no, he has stacks on the litho. Like they killed the litho. Just like they get the, uh, they get the momentum. They are able to charge. They Milo's stack. very, very low. It'd be really huge if they get rid of his armor. Honestly, I think both of these teams are quite happy. Seems like they're doing four. Their draft is uh going on right. Uh, the both front to back. They have. Uh, so they did get there earlier. The abilities to stop each other when it when it's necessary. Right. CC can dive onto the backside. Same thing with the Arlot. Uh, Kush is alone here. Bodge is almost four. If Bodge gets four here, it'd be really good. Uh, Milo's gonna lose his armor, which is also very huge. Like, export is just useless with no armor. They might have to give this. I think. I don't think BT. Oh, big ult actually from Gold World. Gets. And Milo just gets fucked. Or Milo fucks T. But Kush gets the turtle. So it's kind of a trade. BTK do have a bit of a gold lead, though. I don't really know from what, but. Yeah, no, it's a definitely a good pickoff. One for one, that's a trade. One for two. And get the last insanity off of them. I think T went in a little too hard. He already zoned off Zane. But it was a really nice engage from Cold World. Kill over Turtle. Usually Turtle is worth more than one kill because you get XP across your whole team. Both of them are uh, different and you don't get more gold Aristotle with a kill. It's like the same amount. They had a, probably a little bit of a goldie from somewhere else. Some of the crits um into uh, like has claws berserkers versus exia is gonna go for a much different route right uh something <sighs> like the corrosion into dhs um so very t kind of needs to go orx first he's going brute force which is like it's the safe thing to do but versus borg it's not really that great because then you can't kill him uh quite well now in terms of the jungle right akai and brats uh typically brats has kind of a small advantage in terms of getting that retribution off especially with the first skill just a little bit more damage than akai's burst but he does have the uh the the heavy spin to be able to push enemies out and also brats has ability to deal with that right the daytona's welcoming to uh get some of the immunes off and if they're kind of diving hard on zane here he has ult though Ooh, oh, Kush shouldn't get the alt off to get him. To get yeah, fuck there. Way. Almost able to close the distance on there. You're talking about late. No, no, a Kyle for turtle though, which is pretty big. No, Brad's all out though. Of a Kai, especially when it comes Ooh, to a lot of these but I feel like if a Kai has ult compared to Brad's, it's definitely a Brad's favor because Brad's has a lot of damage on his own compared to a Kai. Which helps him when it comes to a lot of more dances because he doesn't actually take damage. He's able to juggle a lot of those shields around. Ah, he missed cannon. Actually, I don't know if he missed it or not. Of these lord fights eventually the shut up cats i'm trying to watch party here down, 
which I've mm -hmm. seen in a lot of these late game fights for BTK. No. That uh, no. is really comfortable on that. Like, no. and they're able to kind of just withstand no. those uh, Down. That, that waiting period at these uh, objective fights. B DA does have the prio here. Zayd still has the ults. A big engage on the Kush. Kush a little getting go on quite hard here. Actually getting a really bad spot. Kush is dead. But Yato got gets a turtle. Whoa, wait. Zane dead. Apple forced the flicker. Bodge is really deep, but Apple misses the swipe. Bodge is dead. T's getting out. That's just like a. It's still it can even trade. The goalie didn't change at all because VTK got two kills, but DA got turtle and a kill. It's like the same thing. Ah, uh, Melon is fine. I had to flicker though. Yeah, they were able to pick up that objective. They almost have now late game. I do believe actually. Okay, late game is actually not hard to win for BTK. I think BTK has the advantage, but since DA have Novaria Ixia, that can turn around the whole fight. So the only way DA wins late game is if Novaria Ixia combo combo just wipes BTK. But BTK, if they like splits, they definitely win because. CC can't match Borg split. Heroes like CC or Ben and Dedetsu be able to get onto the backside of Yato. So if they are <sighs> unable to shut down, it, it, it might smell a little bit of a trouble. But on the but other hand, even gold. these activities they don't have too much peel, right? Our lot has a little bit of the CC. Uh, you know, brats can stand in CC wave clear better. People, no, Borg wave clear is much better than CC. A lot of people, like, they always crazy Rizzo with uh, Borg. To stop people in their tracks, and I think that's DA's. Uh, CC is faster right? rotating, you know, but Borg is much better in terms of just damage. You know, because the AOE or not. End their lives or heavy spin from the backside paired up with the Rizzo. You can smell a lot of trouble. Fuck is the Rizzo? Even with a comp. Irithel? Is he saying a Rithel? Safe in the backside, especially compared to what BTK have in terms of their skills. It's it's still gonna be quite the hard team fight. It's not convincing enough for me. The goalie actually shrunk a little bit. It's like even now. Be able to take this because Yato is not gonna die at all. Yato very very even game so far. Very nice to see. Hard match for Devious to uh, get a convincing. It's more intense that way, you know, not a stomp. Yeah, I feel like it's gonna come down to the, who is the initiator for a lot of these fights. Kush does have an max healing on Zane. Trying to poke him as well. Milo though. Trying to poke out Barats, but Zane kind of getting fucked. By T. Kush. Not a great spot. Kush is dead. Milo, no armor now. But T is solo zoning Zane. The thing is, Zane doesn't want to ult T on a 1v1. But T is actually just fucking him. T should be fine here. Oh, actually, wow. Wait, that pin connected? That's crazy. Wait, how does it? That pin was insane. That is two down for devious. How does that like push him into the wall? Bosh has to flicker out here from basic. Definitely down BTK with the lead. I would never imagine you can get pinned like that. I think he tried tucking the corner too fast. If he kept going straight out, there's no way that pin would have hit. But he tried going around the corner way too early. And then, um, that's how he got pinned. I think that's how. Because I never walk into the wall if I get pinned like that. That's probably what he did. A more significant well, I was actually 4-0, bro. Crazy. So far, along with that tower, is just gonna be pushed. Thank you, thank you, twenty gifted. Now thank you, thank you. Be the overall difference here. BTK definitely having a strong showing. The front to back is working quite well. Even you know, not able to get Yato in a lot of these team fights. It seems like the front line of you know DA is unable to sustain. Eighty percent. I don't think it's like eighty percent. Oh, it's and votes. Just, All right. I thought that was like, like you know, an MPL Indo it has like a likelihood to win. Not like chatter vote, but like an analyst desk essentially. Like they they got they gauge like how how likely it is for a certain team to win. What I thought that was this. It is not eighty percent right now. I say it's like. Yeah, you can see here. The Ooh, uh, 60 40. Devious activity. Yeah, probably like 70 30. Eh, 65 35. You're more accurate. The 2K lead, but it's not like First Lord is when you really can discern who's going to win or not. Because First Lord fight can definitely be very big, varied. Miello being able to zone people out with that uh, last insanity. A lot of tools here that can shut down Kush, that can stun Kush to, to mm. leave open an opportunity for Mobazane to get the retry while Kush is either being stunned or zoned out. And it's something that the uh, team of Devious Activity is going to need to counter if they Whoa, want Zane! To getting ahead. jumped on really hard here. Big swipe from Bodge. Kill Zane! But they had to trade Golden. But at the top lane, BTK finding themselves one for one trade. 
Yeah, you mentioned earlier that but they can't do Lord. Whoa, Kush forced their entry. That's not too great. The thing is, they need to really fuck Milo over if they want to win a fight. That's the only way they win now, because he's so fat on Borg. I fight Borg, we're just from our front line and try and kill. Pretty much has five out of the six it has to be like Melon treading Borg, ideally, so hard to or like Navaria shooting a ball at him because CC doesn't really do too much damage to Borg, and obviously Barats can't do shit. Barats is the one gets fucked by Borg. Yeah, the Pryo, Lane Pryo. I really am. I think BTK's favor. I think it's Navaria can always clear waves super fast and then rotate. They need to poke out BTK with Navaria. They don't win a full on 5v5. Wild charge already onto Kush. Kush on a good spot here. Being forced to use ult here. Ixia with the ult, but it's not really going to do much. Cold one pretty low. Kush is dead though for sure. T trying to do his best. Smile has no armor. Not really fightable anymore. You don't have Ixia ults. Coral one HP has to reset. I think they're still gonna lord, but he's gonna red first and wait for Coral to reset. Probably free lord for BTK. Dean in a bad spot. Pretty low. That's no vengeance. Oh, Pop Vengeance still dies though. Being ticked down. Basic does free lord kill on to t i believe this is going to be a free lord for btk quicker than Zay tribute it was just very weird to pick cc barats when they can just go pork i don't know what they're thinking there significant for an xp lane right x pork typically you do build up a lot of the tanky items or axe into kind of the immortality that milo has right now probably paired up with the brute force and he's dealing tons of damage so far because you need to have someone to kill board with setting up with lord marching down on the top side gets the last sanity off here Ooh, Coral is just gonna die there. Pretty bad death from him. Zane goes in with the spin. Ooh, flickers out, but it's not gonna matter, I think. Melon dies. Oh, wait, big from Kush, actually. Wait, Bodge, wait, Milo's like really deep in alone right now. He's gonna lose Immo for sure, right? Wait, T1 HP has to get off. Actually, Melo didn't die. That's crazy. That's still actually like, that's one for two. So it wasn't DA's favor there. Everyone is one HP at this top side, bro. T, hello? You're gonna die, bro. Like, okay. It's still gonna be a win for BTK though, because they get all the high, uh, all the outer turrets. No, it's a matter of. Ooh. Only way DA wins is if Ixia gets like full build and can pop. Otherwise, BTK wins. Most of the goalies actually on board compared to CC. CC's broke. Bro, why does UA pronounce the names so weird? Exia? Irithal? I don't get it. But it just it just still feels like DA is lacking a little bit in terms of kind of the peel department. Yeah, we got a little bit of a replay. It's not even peel. It's just damage. Just actual damage. They lack damage right now. That's what they need the most, is just pure damage. BTK actually only have Grok and Akai CC. It's not a lot. They're just so tanky and they don't take any damage right now. Even if the A had a lot of CC, they'd still they, would, they just need damage. So the only way the A wins though is if it goes like hyper late game and both games are full, both teams are full build because there's no way they're winning from behind unless BTK throws. More of a supporting act, basic, also farming kind of for the late game, but Milo definitely has, you know, shown himself, uh, you know, put himself above the rest so far in this match. Definitely showed. They really fed the goat. Performance here so far, 5K gold lead. Da, you know, looking to see if they can get back into this game. They have what it. Damn, T getting gapped by Milo. She extra counter CC. Yeah, it's a very like obvious thing. It's not like impossible for the CC to play in the early game. Early game, you could maybe beat the Xborg if you play it right. But like, Borg will just shit stomp you late game in comparison. You would just like stomp CC late game. Ever get into that late game point? Well, he's already basically in late game. The Borg, that's how fed he is, all the items he has, and the gold. I don't think ZA can really contest this. It's like way too hard. 
Yeah, and unfortunately, it's not just the expert that they're, they're, that is the problem. I don't see how they win a fight here. Been doing such a great the prio, job. look at the side lanes as well. Christian going to die here. On the damage as well. Way too deep, brother. Is gonna get up there. In, is You're dead. Dude, dust us. That's going to be, I believe, a five for him right now. Five, zero, and four. Now stealing the purple buff while Zane... Tikuma. And secures himself a lord. This is this is a really really strong team coming out from BTK, right? DA, especially with the new lineup coming in, the performance against Night Horde was so crystal clear. It felt extremely convincing. But this time around, BTK definitely shown that DA still has a lot of weaknesses that they have to kind of watch out for. Because seven K at fifteen do, minutes do, is do, not do, significant, do, but it's still do, extremely one sided. Do. BTK has all the outer towers available now. They're getting a very good sync from both of the sides. Ixio probably just ults the Lord. Actually, they might just give up mid tower because it's gonna charge. There's no way she could stop it. He might just ult it anyway, but I think he should save it. Just let it charge. Maybe ult a different lane. Alright, they should have ulted Bot Wave here to save it, but. Uh... Wait, Milo can't go in any. Wait, Cole, that's a way, way too deep of an engage from Cole World. Big swipe. Milo's gonna die. Big shutdown. They lost like all their high grounds though. Well into the back lines. Looks like he got left behind. And a still a big W. Still a is going to allow big for BTK. They got two high grounds. The top high grounds one HP. That's like done in one push. A little bit more traction in some of these team fights. Definitely. got shot down by Zilla Borg. Something. They can't ask for much more though. Six K gold deficit. Look at DA's base. It's just if they can survive this next Lord. Base the goal lead starts to become insignificance, just, you know, but it's still going to mean something right now. So definitely BTK, that was a well, um, Very dumb there. ult from yeah, Coral yeah, there the to go in that deep. Uh, Nobody yeah, on BTK yeah, can really follow up with that except Milo. And Milo had no armor there when he did it. So I guess you could say it's probably a bad ult from Milo. I don't know. What is he doing? I don't really like the Ixia pick here, man. It's very hard to play Ixia into that comp. But Ixia, sorry. CC. I'm missing Ixia. Tired, man. CC. I don't like CC too much here. Yeah, I mean, the 5k lead, especially when we go on to this 17, 20 minute mark, where the Lord is just, <sighs> the, the gold lead is not going to be, uh, you know, too big of an impact, right? For both yeah, what you were saying, the gold lead doesn't matter. I mean, it still matters. I think when it gets to 20 minutes is when it doesn't matter anymore. I think it still matters right now. Quite an even match, but BTK, the front to back comp paired up with the CC from the wild charge and the heavy spin. That was a really good ult from Mel in there. If, so the only way DA wins is if A, BTK throws, B, Yato just like makes one of the one HP are very very low with this poke or C Melon gets like an insane ult and wipes their whole team BTK all they have to do is just like they should not clump up too much so it makes it so Ixia can't just fuck them I see like it by playing individual play side lanes and all that stuff they'll win uh I do think they should just play for the objective with like the Akai ult instead of trying to fight because then by trying to fight is when you kind of like fuck yourself over because someone's going to go too far or someone's going to make a mistake. Ooh, that's really big. Milo no armor. That's actually so big for for DA. But Bodge is so too deep. Bodge probably loses Zimmo here. Has Flicker. Very bad Flicker though. I don't know why he flickered that way. T gets ulted on. Vengeance though. Oh, Melo with a huge ult. They ate Akai. Akai's no spin. Akai is dead. Nicolette, 1 HP as well. Milo has no armor. Wait, it's going to be a lord for DA. Milo's dead. Bro, what the fuck? Look at Bodge. Bodge is fucking screaming, bro. Apple 1 HP. He has to flicker out. Apple dead too. What the fuck is going on? Holy shit. DA. Yeah, the full barrage is crazy. It's exactly what I was talking about, bro. They, they did the exact thing I said not to do. They got rid of the Borg armor early. He was huge. And majority of these team fights, and then, is gonna man, be taking the lead in terms of the damage dealt, but the I literally said they should not be fighting at the lore. They should try to just zone and get get it. But it's like, I think it's over now. Kush pretty much has a very very happy time 
Because the thing is, they have they don't have BTK does not have dive to kill Ixia. Ixia has no flicker right now. If Ixia dies, GG. DA loses. But now, if BTK cannot dive and get Ixia, they will lose. So BTK can still win here because they have flickers. Grok is flicker, Exporter is flicker. Ixia has no flicker. If Grok flicker rolls and then Exporter follows up on Ixia, they win the fight. They should win that fight at least. But if Milo loses his armor early, like he is right now, and if he dies. Milo is the only one who can follow up on the Grok ult. Irithel cannot go that deep. It's too risky for her, especially versus Arlot. If Milo cannot follow up on the Grok engage, it's uh, over. Anger came, can't swallow and go top right. Sure. I don't, I'm not, I don't think it's small, actually, like this. They got one high ground? I don't think they should ask for any more. Cold World, though. This is a big flicker ult for Cold World. It connected. Melon quite low. Wind to nature. Apple no flicker. Melon running. Apple going in on Melon. Loses Zemo. Zane is here. Heavy spin? Apple's dead. T might live. Milo's gonna get his armor back soon. T trying to run. Not gonna work though. Bodge is cutting the wave so they can't end. Good cut from Bodge. Can they do anything? Bot wave though. 30 seconds. Okay, they only have bot wave to work with. I don't know if they can end or not. DA throwing now? Yeah, they overstayed hella. Like, I, I like they called it, man. <laughs> they need to get out there. They overstayed hella. Wait. Okay, they have two ways. I think it's over. I think beats Gans here. All's gonna swipe it out, but there's still that mid wave there. GG. GG. Yeah. Hella overstay. It's actually such a close game. It was a really good game. It's a good first game. Nice. You know, we talked about kind of the front to back strategy that they had. If Milo was able to get that last insanity off. I'm actually amazed DA made that work with their draft. Their draft is really shit, I thought. BTK were able to get the fights that they were looking for for that for that win. So, you know, if BTK is just a little bit more patient, they should be able to take this quite convincingly. And, you know, they were able to do so just that. Now, DA with a different strategy coming through, it was quite close. We saw a little not all in the middle. That's my goat. When they, you know, decided BTK did fall a little bit under uh, the base of DA, they were able to get a few towers, get some push in. But the overextension kind of cost them the game. Milo was able to kind of pull through once again. The last insanity hit gets off plenty of damage. The rest of the crew from BTK just coming in and cleaning up the whole entire fight. Yeah, I want to say they lingered at that uh, base a little bit too long. I don't blame them, though. You have the opportunity. You have the leg up on BTK. Why not try to draft if to your advantage? He was overcoming the draft if, but then they, you know, overshot themselves. Definitely, I think BTK had the better drafts at the start of the game. Like, if you really look at DA, it was really... It was kind of like a 3v5. Barats and CC had almost, like, no impact. CC was doing really good zoning... Akai early game, but it didn't really matter because Borg was just shit stomping Barats. Onik losing EOS in today's loss from BTR. Dude, I don't know. Onik lost a lot of games in reg season, last season. Of course, not as much as now. Like, and it didn't really matter. I think it's because I keep putting Albert in, man. Like, CW just did so much better than Albert. Maybe in scrims is different. Like, Albert doing better than CW. That's hard to say. Aro seconds? Yeah, yeah going crazy for our man Aro was actually a really solid team before like i thought kabuki and high actually is high still in Aro? i don't know against a team like btk and you know i know kabuki bro kabuki was such a good jungler jungler gold that i remember seeing that he would flex definitely shine the most uh in this very first match right the wild charge impact plays he was always there in the beginning he did get some high sub yeah high's to high's good but obviously always better to deal with and when we talk about but they should just play cw man coming in getting the first it's probably like out like i don't know if they're trying to force albert or it's like albert's better in scrims than cw 
Or maybe ACW is just chilling, man. Maybe he doesn't want to play, and he just wants to let Albert play. He seems like a very quiet guy, CW. Like the most, I want to say introverted, but like laid back maybe ah, i say boots is the most laid back he's like the most i guess introverted is the way you put it mage definitely well deserved here by the well yeah and then also uh doing her job she was there for the damage and to get that little frightened cc on there uh and then to just give up those kills for uh let them stack on to miela who was just doing such a, a great job so a hats off there to, to kind of have that restraint uh, she can, especially on that hero. Save that introvert dude's unhinged. Uh, okay, really? But, unhinged? Uh, okay, just, <laughs> just doing what she's supposed to uh, as a utility there and the the uh, the other uh, place of damage there. DA, hmm. I want to say the draft, not, uh, not, it didn't feel like it melded well together. There really wasn't hmm. a lot of protection for Ixia. You really had to rely on a mistake from BTK where they all suddenly decided that they needed to back up and they were on the retreat. And that's the main point where they were able to find solutions with the Ixia. She was able to catch them leaving or, or had them like kind of on the back foot. But like and we saw from that last, that very last engagement, there was really nothing protecting the Ixia uh, when that full barrage went out and uh, we saw them able to close the distance very quickly on her and and you know it's hard to peel exia off especially when you go against so many people that immune a lot of the cc's right grok her skill immune exborg uh last insanity immune right uh heavy spin really hard to deal with disperses a lot also has a small immune opportunity with a lot of the cc so it's just quite the hard comp that uh, DA drafted to be able to deal with what BTK has going over the head to head. It is you think it's sounds better with BTK? To Rome uh -huh. You know, the KDA definitely stands up much taller for uh -huh. the real damage taken also on his side. And we've had a personally, we've had a hard time for Sage Sanderson than BTK. But I don't know if they're objectively so better because it's like team, teams can have different play styles. BTK. I know he ended with a 0, 1, and 10. You know, very, very small deaths, almost zero to no mistakes here uh, for Mr. Cold World, and was able to. Yeah, I mean, this fight was three going eight seventy seven guys. They were actually, they're actually pretty good, bro. Like, for the match, but we were really trying, like, actually trying. The board very much well done for both of these. Probably the most we tried was this series throughout the entire event ACT. Like we actually thought about it and put a lot of prep into it, into what we were gonna do. Like throughout the entire NACT so far, or it's more we're just like fuck it, we we'll figure it out as we're going. Is that a GG jacket? It's actually like a crew neck. It's a crew neck. GG crew neck. Uh, it's actually really clean. Yo, the GG merch is actually pretty si pretty sick, man. This is the GG crew neck. I thought it was actually clean. This is gladiators on the back. Uh, I was like, goddamn. This is like their merch. The initiation I thought it was pretty quick or pretty pretty nice two guys that are starting for the team fight Mobizan, repping the merch you know right your name no no this isn't this isn't a jersey this is the merch like you buy it anyone can buy it kind of thing this is the merch not like a where we buy it? I think they have like a website. This doesn't have my name on it. It just says Gladiators. Yeah, but as I was just saying, um, the A77 series, even though we 3-0, that was the hardest we've tried so far in the entirety of NACT. I mean, obviously, from here on, we'll be full trying, you know? And then, of course, the damage that came from that last insanity. Whereas on the but we put the most like prep really have so far into that. That well together. All right, game two drafts. Game damage on there. I mean, you the only real CC that you had on the side of Devious Activity was the uh, the final slash R lot, uh, and it's then you enough. were just kind of yeah, it's it's not enough, and you were kind of hoping. I mean, you're just hoping that they what stick together, they don't move, because uh, they're they're definitely gonna try to get out of it. There was just so much CC on the side of uh, BTK to really shine in that early game, and we're gonna see if that kind of uh, if uh, we adjust a few things here for Devious Activity. That's just a, a, an outstanding draft uh, for BTK. That's why that's why things like Terizla has kind of shined a little bit of light in the recent. Angela Matilda. Oh, BTK with the first pick now. Angela Leno is an interesting two bands. Quite good, even with just a small. Nobody picking Masha. Well, Masha really. People just didn't know how to play Verser, bro. Now people realize how to play Verser. It's really not as OP as you think. I still think she's good, but she's by no means like a prior pick anymore. But you know, generally, once you figure out how to play Verser, people were just like kind of. 
that's just the weak scared on how to play like how to play Rosar. now it's like oh it's not a big of a deal I don't know. 57 dollars for this thing it's not awful it's pretty it's actually really nice quality like this this is a really nice quality shirt i was like god damn this is nice definitely you know this time around i think da have a um, how do you counter masha i mean it's just like you just gotta respect her bro like you should know okay masha can one shot you and just play around either focusing her catching her off guard or just having like a lot of poke to get rid of her hp bars the thing is if you focus masha and don't let her get to the back line if she doesn't have like three hp bars she can't one shot your back line. i mean two yeah she can but then you could just win the nature of one of them and there's no way one will just one shot you once you get win though it makes her so hard to use yeah, to kill the marksman. Too. I mean, um, to, to take that out there, uh, wondering what the plan in mind there. They're going to have CCs taken out for devious activity. Uh, even it, it just First pick. They're not going to let uh, Bratz, maybe. I'm, uh, assuming. Baratz, Pharaoh of X, I think they're first picking here. Yeah, Baratz. <laughs> Makes a lot of sense there. Uh, which means we, we're going to be leaving open, uh, I want to say, the, the mage pick uh, and, a, and a strong XP lane, possibly it's, for DA. It's it's so interesting that North America really, really loves this Baratz pick. And, you know, to, to not take it away, Baratz is a very, very great hero. But um, we don't really see a lot of Baratz being picked up so extremely early i think things like the box you know with a little bit anti-heal might provide there are a lot very strong two heroes right there da looking for the fair miss and the arlot now this opens the i think bt probably grabs val to get the furl if not the lu e right valentina me val and like roger harris uh you know nether realm versus nether realm that's a great matchup you could also slide in the odette um, that I kind of mentioned. It's it, it's a great <laughs> response towards the fair mist swan song. I I know Rem is out there shining. I know it's an Odette main out there. Um, Odette is very very good against fair mist. I would like to see it happen. We don't get to see the Louis in action, but the Valentina does come out to play. Nicolette with a great Valentina game from the last one, so definitely something expected. Um, so BTK now yep, with the pick available chooses to go for the Harith. This sets up for again the Paquito, the Benedetta that Milo really likes. You know, allows the Harith to kind of be in the four versus for four team fights and allow Milo to carry on the split. Now, so it'd be in Harith DA's best interest here to grab like annoying, a, a gold so they don't get their golds banned out. Because there are some golds that do better versus Harith. And then if you ban them out, it's going to suck. Either that, or they grab the XP and they counter pick, or they counter ban what counters the XP. But you can still flex Barats to XP. So that, that's not... The best thing to do for them is probably grab gold. Yep, XU. Very interesting to force it to go XC again. I mean, XU goes good versus Harith. We literally just displayed that. So... They're going to ban the dive heroes this time, Grok. Because I really felt like we could not take off because there was just never isn't this the exact same draft a77 did chat <laughs> in terms of like the first three picks Barats, val harris didn't they do that without the penalty of the btk just like absolutely closing the distance and uh crushing uh him so things that peel well comes into mind for me in terms of the xp i like the tarizla Right. Or was it Fred Val Harris? I think it was Fred Val Harris. Into the shine, um, so definitely something that DA should consider here. Things like the Kaja and the Franco, the suppressions, and especially with such a big hitbox that Bratz has, Franco does quite shine here. And if he's able to get the bloody hunt either onto uh, the Bratz or even the Harith, that's going to be a free setup uh, for Melon to have. I don't see Ixia beats Harith. This is Harith on early game. Harith will probably win straight up in a level four fight. It's not that Ixia hard beats him in an 1v1. It's that Ixia hard outranges Harith. So if you have any other person who sets on the Harith, even if the Harith is Purify, he, it still takes him a few seconds to do this dash ult combo to get out of Ixia ult range. So the idea is that if you just ult on the Harith when he gets CC'd, Ixia will just barrage, full barrage and just melt him from a distance. And in lane, Harith cannot do as well versus Ixia because Ixia has so much sustain in her kit. Harith cannot, like, the only way Harith trades, wins trades with Ixia 
is if Herod's second skill first skill, and Ixia cannot get her passive off. If Ixia gets her passive off and gets that healing, immediately the trades, you're going to lose the trade. And the Kaja, Kaja is an interesting pick because they have the Val to take Fair ults, but now Val has to choose whether she wants the Fair or Kaja ult. Kaja can work here if they play for the side lanes actually, but in a full 5v5, it's probably better with like the ruby that Cold world just got so now da they should be playing like side lanes with kaja and i think ix is in a hard burst here with kaja but uh terizzle's interesting he deals a lot of damage but uh, you're definitely gonna need something and oh and oh that's a lot of so btk have a lot of cc Something they do lack, though, is, like, damage. Now, early game, base stats are enough. Like, Teresa base stats does a fuck ton of damage. But when you get to the late game here, if Harith can't get in on the enemy, they're gonna, like, lack a lot of damage. They lack split too? Yeah, they don't have a split. They have Harith. Like, Harith has to be the, the split pusher this game for BTK if they're gonna go catch waves. Because Teresa's way too slow. Terza could do it, but then he won't make it back in time. Now, it depends on what they pick for the XP on DA. Oh, I mean, it's Arla XP. Nolan, ooh. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, there's no... I mean, Mars would be the only other tank jungle to go here. Mars isn't that bad here, actually. But, but I mean, it's not that different, though. No one's interesting though, because no one is kind of hard to kill Barats with. But like, if he's if no one snowballs, it can be very strong. Who no one's like to kill? Yeah, it's like I don't know who no one's really gonna kill here on the side of a BTK. I'm not completely opposed to the uh, normally against the, with the no one snowball bro if no one snowballs he can shred the tanks yeah, easy with Kaja it's like even though um, you think okay no one versus tanks isn't great if he gets like malefic early with like a damage item he can kill any of the tanks but they have to snowball with Nolan Nolan you have to snowball you, they have to win early like going even early is not going to be a win for me for DA here and if you it's a snowball and it's probably over <laughs> unless they get to like super late game to where ixia again same as last game where ixia can maybe carry the game with just like one ult anytime you have an ixia it's like it's not 100 percent over because one ixia ult can just turn around the whole game so i can never really say it's like a guaranteed loss Ooh. already moving on to his little green camp got both of the buffs and potentially looking to fight out for the little wanderers and early aggression from both teams we don't seem like coach is gonna be able to get the green here all aggressive quite early on right i'm gonna retro that a little bit of that uh that penalty you pay for having an assassin jungler you see already oh yato poked out a little bit here taken very low but should be fine though already starting to encroach on the jungle of devious activity looking for an opportunity to find kush alone yeah goal is losing a bit here probably trading a little bit too much able to take off take a look at some of these emblems yeah, a lot of aggressive emblems coming out from the Melon side. resetting. I don't know about the resets. I mean, kind of has to actually, because like, look at Barats. Talent, of course, wilderness blessings. But he's gonna lose at least one minion, maybe two. From the far lane into some of the team fights, right? So very aggressive emblems coming out from the side of Devious. On the side of Bloodhounds, though, a little bit more. Why are you going that late? Hello. Okay. He should have went way earlier if he wanted to poke out Terizzo. Now he has no blue for this. Some mobility, but overall, just he while he had the blue up, he should have went on Terizzo right away. From the side of BTK, I think they're gonna give us if they want to go for the Nolan blue. I mean, I don't think they win the Sorrow fight anyway because it's like Terizzo Barats. It's probably the best idea to give here. Like in their best interest to give. But they're gonna be at like a 500 gold disadvantage with how the lanes are currently going. He saved Retri. They're gonna invade. Milo has flicker. I'm not sure if that was a mistake. Did Kush lose blue? Kush lost blue to Cold World. Holy shit. Updating Hamachi. Uh, Bodge is dead. Big swipe, though. Another one forced to go off from Apple. But. As, wait, oh. Wait, two kills. 2 0. That's really bad, bro. It's already looking over. He's like, they have to snowball if they wanted to win. Into deep 
enemy territory get the team fight that they're looking for get the pickoffs it's about a 1k gold lead so you know btk i i, I feel like now they just that's actually insane he lost his blue buff of, uh neutral game in the beginning they get their small advantages here and they're just small out oh flicker can he live oh he actually lives this is kind of what i was afraid of with the nolan pick in the see, like, see what i mean like it's when you pick so kaja farah into val val just takes feral and then kaja can't really kill anyone like you have to get a guaranteed pick without val around if you want to kill anyone and even then it's like you have to be with nolan if you want to burst hard enough with that now it's a 1500 lead three minutes in pretty big lead there's a more uh, another dimension to this plan for DD's dementia <laughs> yeah and it is a tank really deep for no, apple there surprise cushion turn that around or at least try to <laughs> trying to invade the blue here coming out to play with like kind of like the yeah, out to one hp with the with the brute force this time we do get to see a nolan on a little tank loses the red tree he is like almost two levels down they do deny away the blue buff the bully i didn't invade the red too because he has no red tree neither of them do and you know what you're scared of private is just coming into life here <laughs> btk is just dominating across the map they're just denying dude, dude, waves dude. and jungle creeps over and over and this Kaja's bit he, fit here yeah kaja wasn't the greatest know, pick it was very i'm expecting that pick for sure because you have no one shot here bro you have no carry you have dolan which is a yeah burst hero but like how are you going to oh my god they just fucked up bro another realm he's probably gonna live there's a flicker oh no it wasn't even flicker ults yeah that's the only way Kaja's gonna burst anyone is if he ults like right there and no one follows up but they fucked that up too what i was gonna say is that when you have um Kush actually getting picked up here. Oh, Melon's gonna be able to clear this out. Kush in a little bit of trouble. Cold World and Nicolette in tow. Melon uses that flicker to get himself to safety. But Kush without the purple buff, the thing that makes a Nolan so strong is his ability to spam his abilities. So the ability to spam your abilities. You need a lot of <laughs> mana for that. You need to be able to kind of uh to get a lot of that back. Now DA's only hope is again just late game. <laughs> GG's already? Yeah, it's looking pretty over already. After that 30 seconds of uh, of spamming those and you know the impact of the kaja has not been as significant as the i'm offended coming out from ruby and i think that's something looking that for a collapse here in the bot no they're just gonna go into blue a way to uh, get around right joy Bosch, the 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 no one's just trying to farm that, he has is that was a big cancel actually with, but they're just no one got that i think zane retreat early oh i know he actually said retreat okay never mind i thought zane retreat early when he reset the buff but kushers actually got it it's like, hey man, take the divine judgment, give it to me. There's nothing that 3k gold deficit though. Side of Devious is really showing here that there's no burst damage early on to be able to connect with the divine. Now, this is like a 50 50 right here. Time to farm. No yeah, definitely needs a lot of time to farm. And Thermos is not a significant burst mage, it's more of a kind of like a, a long term burst. Uh, with no, I'm dead. Movie, but oh, actually, cold altar. Not divine. Yeah, uh, we do have another room coming out there, but to add on to your man, I don't know why they changed that to another room. Cold altar sounds so much better. Find the target. How are you going to get to that target when you've got Cold World uh, with so much CC? Mielo can punish yep. you with a penalty zone. There's just uh, so much CC that even if you find the divine, any type of closing the distance is going to be to the detriment of devious activity. Nicolette does get pulled Whoa. to that mid tower. So Alt on the oh. apple flickers out, but Zane. Nicolette able to find the flicker and I don't even know what's going on. I don't know if Kush is like lagging or something, but it's like he's being very delayed when Bodge goes in. Or it's not communicated that well. Because I feel like if he reacted right away, he would have died. But it's like he waited a second. It was weird. But yeah, it's like there's not enough burst. And it's literally only no one who can burst with Kaja. You know, that's what DA kind of has. They have the Arlock. Oh, wait, that can hit across that wall there? That's crazy, actually. Yeah, we do see that T. He's going to have to expend that flicker. Moba Zane and the rest of BTK basically have this purple buff on cooldown. They know the Milo flicker ults in. T has no flicker. Gets knocked back. Probably is going to die here. Netherrealm goes off. Is going to live. Probably. Uh, wait. Bod just ulted Zane. Okay, that was weird. <laughs> That was a very into play from DA there. <laughs> it seems it's over, bro. It's over. Wait, hello, Kush? 
able to get another okay. one here. There's just not much that the side of Devious has. And, you know, it's honestly just due to the, the, the risk that they took of picking up this Nolan, right? Typically, when you go for the Assassins, you want a very hard It is game over game. now, boys. like an Edith. Or, That's know, a 6k a gold deficit eight minutes in. Side in the bush and his overall objective they surrendered. Jeez. Bushes and like, why didn't Nolan like, go back into that bush instead of running away? Did he not have vision, maybe? Maybe that was the case. But they literally just watched him walk from mid, no? Tunnel vision, maybe? Kind of an assassin hiding in the back. Could be. Goes with the uh, divine judgment off the cooldown of the flicker. Gets a guarantee pick off and rinse and repeat. But the side of DA, especially in the early game, they're unable to find any openings to get that guaranteed pick off. And that's kind of the reason why Devious is trying to pick a cushion so funny. <laughs> You know, way to to uh, it's like uh, poor quality. A lot of these fights to punish a lot of the mistakes that BTK might have, especially when they do choose for the commit. And you know, you said it quite well early on. Cold world, too much CC. Interesting final that. slash. Another realm is not going to save T. Oh, he actually gets out. How the fuck did T get out there? What the fuck? They just let him. They just let him get out. That's crazy. Without taking a death. So I mean. I guess looking up for a devious activity in there that they didn't sell. But that was like a anybody. charity kill right there. Coach is trying to get an opposite tower here. I think he gets it. I don't think Teresa can stop him without ult. Yeah, that's gone. Yeah, the only way... Uh, Coach has to perma split now. Like, not, not, Milo's gonna match him and he's not gonna be able to kill Milo. But, like, they're not winning 5v5. This is the only alternative. Do you watch Evos versus Onik PTR matches? No, I didn't watch anything. MPO Indonesia-wise. I haven't watched much. I wanted to sleep early, bro. I didn't want to watch MPO. I think BTK already spotted it here. Yeah, and unfortunately for DJ, I think they uh, saw or they heard it. With that conceal, some good placement from a Nicolette and he's in a good spot though for the final slash. With it Reddit. right now, they're gonna have some minions of and the Lord crashing down at the bottom, so they're looking for an opportunity here. And DA knows what's up. It's gonna be three v five conceal oh. play of their own. Full barrage, but no wow, that was nice. Line, two down, I think they knew down, that Ixia was there, or they tried to collapse. The thing is, why is I don't know why Ixia is ulting right away though. If you know they're gonna be in front of you, there's no reason for you to ult. Very weird. It's probably over here. You know, some, 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 some closer series. Cause, cause I don't think they can defend this. Uh, no, no, they can't. There's no way. It's Yato. They just tower lock here and win. GG. Seems like it's gonna be a big old sweep chat. Big old sweep. The quickest match of the night, beating gaming gladiators with a 10 minute and 36 second match here against a devious activity. <laughs> 11 to 0, private. A clean sweep from. It's gonna be a, probably a 3 0. Because I doubt DA has the mental to come back. To get even just a kill, a punish off of. The bloodthirsty kings here 11 0 and 34 is the overall kda btk played a great game and when we took the exact same draft they said so except right? they had i think they had fred instead of rats early on the with the uh the harith barrett brats foul harith but they added on the ruby and the terizla and just made their comp so extremely tough to deal with the front line has the ability to you know peel off anything that they're looking for even go for some conceal engagement and the the bet that devious activity had right uh, when you pair the assassin up with the Kaja, typically it's just not both really getting sleeps the assassin is very oh it is what it is bro when you pair it with the grok with uh, uh, an Edith. Loser bracket should be more interesting. Real, those front line sets. But the Kaja, I think loser bracket is tomorrow then. Really DA versus A77 will be tomorrow. If to DA loses here, which they probably will. I know day two is like loser bracket only basically. Today is like upper bracket and then tomorrow is like loser bracket games. But honestly, it was a well draft done by the side of BTK. They almost had no weaknesses against the composition that the side of D Game two is that already? Yup. Even with the early game. 2-0. With the Barats, with denying some of the purple buffs, going into the red side to, you know, create havoc. BTK definitely shined quite well in this, in, in this match.
Yeah, and you can see here, uh, a, t a typical for BTK, basic with the gold per minute. Uh, Zane actually coming in uh, with uh, the uh, almost three uh, 30,000 damage there, and Cold World with do, the do, assists. Do, 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 I want to say do, do, the, the biggest difference do, for me do, do, uh, in the do. Game and Gla Gladiators matchup and this one for me. Game and Gladiators. I want to say BTK's draft against Devious Activity. Devious Activity. Yeah, Devious drafts are just like kind of dog shit, I'm not going to lie. Draft, I'm <laughs> You already see some like uh it? i thought da's like, first three was fine early game, a lot of but getting the kaja nolan second phase was so weird all about those three things so and weird getting the kaja nolan second so phase quickly, and they're getting even faster at executing it like here, that was a like either of those heroes could have worked but with like a different hero they don't really you know what i mean two zero and seven from yellow has been having kaja would have been better if they went like carry so instead of ixia uh, and then right nolan could have been better if they had like a more aoe set roam than kaja to, uh, to, uh, like a kufra well, honestly, I don't even know where to go. or grok but they banned grok very weird more early game uh we need some answers but right now i want to say btk is on top of it yeah this the suit and ties no a77 versus da tomorrow just the first chaos, four right? in loser bracket these teams have all had a lot of time <laughs> oh so tomorrow is just a loser bracket from last week's losers preparation and then next week will be the loser bracket of today's losers that they are one of and whoever loses palios versus btk the rest and they're continuing to prove that Points. It's that as well. A tough game for the side of devious activities. Something that they could definitely bounce back from. It's just that they have. Do you think they can bounce back from that, bro? Hell no. Nah. I'd be surprised, bro. CC a little bit more front line to deal with their comp, or go for something that's a little bit out of the ordinary, right? Last oh, they play banana versus each other. I see. Be slotted in early, right? The Masha that has not been picked up, the Natan that is also available, but people are sticking to this Exia pick, which you know, quite honestly. Why does UA pronounce heroes this way? Exia, Irithyll. It's not going to happen just like that, right? It's it's a very very hard pick to set up you need a lot of front lines like the Terizla, the edith uh the minnow in the front to be able to stop even a fredron to be able to stop people in their tracks and the setup is just not not a perfect scenario for the exia to be able to be picked in like let's say the first or the second phase the draft like it's way too early it's it's not something that i like i think things like the carry and the kaja could have paired well especially dealing with something like the barats those are things that are available but you know da is not opting to go for those picks and i think it's just biting them in the butt at <laughs> this point <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I was up, I was about to comment on that too. I feel like for some reason right now in North America, we've super hyper fixated on Ixia as like uh -oh. the the end all be all right now. She's got some glaring holes in her kit. Uh, which is just the fact that she's basically a sitting duck. You could put a flicker on her, but if you don't have something th that's able to peel for her, <coughs> excuse me, I'm so upset by this, uh, I, but, but something that's able to create that wall for her, uh, she's basically a sitting duck, and there's just so many better picks. And I, I, I was actually kind of looking to see if maybe Ixia came up in like uh, MPLPH or nope. something very, uh, very suddenly. No, it's just here that that we have this. We feel like she can just be this uh, this huge game changer. I know there's been some players that that have had relative success. Melon being one of those, but against a team like uh, BTK, you need to be able to protect your marksman and uh, putting putting them on Ixia, you're basically setting a lot of dials against him. So, I mean, you can take a look here at the damage taken. I mean, uh, it, it pretty much uh, seen... a lot of it going over to like zero percent. There's yeah. just no, there were no kills there for devious activity right what's, now. And what's, they what's need to figure something out here quickly. Is, is, is like, when have we seen a Faramus getting the sand back, my friend? Like, what, <laughs> like, what, where are we in terms of the meta that the fair miss is the one that's getting hit hard so there's definitely some logistic problem inside of devious that they have to kind of fix in order for them to get back into this series and if not this series there's definitely uh, a lot of matches that they have to play through in kind of lower bracket right <laughs> and you know they have a little bit more leeway to be able to you know figure things out again this da is quite a new a uh, lineup that we haven't seen in the regular season i know they talked about how consistent and this is the lineup that they really want to put but standing up tall again 
North America, they're not able to get the performance that they were looking for. And this is pretty much the Dark Knight team that we all vetted in the beginning. Hey, they're going to be a contender. They're going to give BTK a very hard time. And so far, we're not exactly getting to see that. Yes, the individual players are good. The playmaking ability of each one is things that we cannot take away. But in terms of the five-man synergy, BTK is just dominating and just vibrating all like anything in its path they're just completely destroying it and it's just not moba zane's game anymore right export ban from da uh da has the first pick of course still holding up strong with that leadership 100 percent kp i don't think this game is going to be any different yeah, uh, that's been one of the, the biggest uh, talking points for me when it comes to BTK and their growth throughout the season, it, or uh, even throughout seasons, plural, is that uh, the the synergy he kind of lacked last season with his team put everything on his shoulders. If you if you want to beat BTK, attack Moba Zane, ban out Moba Zane, bing bang boom it's done <laughs> he, he was going to be the strongest yeah. part that is no longer an option here because you've got the rest of btk here have uh performed even if you give i've talked about it before uh i think it was off screen i talked about it but if even if you give him an akai or if you give him one of the the last picks in his jungle arsenal the drafting has been so good that the rest of the composition will support <laughs> that pick in a way that it still becomes a, a problem for you and Right now, like Faramus, Borg, Angela Ben, that early game, finding out the, the Matilda Ben to make some of these. They have strong picks in mind, but they're not setting the stage to make those picks successful. The Ixia, the lack of CC, the lack of the early game uh, in that first game that they had. Uh, and that's just where BTK is starting to shine here. We can see some of the normal picks here, focusing on the support roles there. Matilda and Angela going to be banned out for BTK, X Borg. Uh, and the Farama is going to be taken off for devious activity. And I do want to give a shout out to uh, Midnight. I think it's a PH caster. Um, you know, they, he, he's been helping out BTK with a lot of the drafts. And definitely very, very... You see Dez? Impactful. Nah, I'm just going to do this one game, them off, bro. Picks that he just pretty much secured and well-rounded the draft BTK. The lack of CC provided with two of the, 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 the biggest front lines. I'm pretty tired, sets. bro. Right? Like, I'm not even talking much right now. I'm just watching. To deal with a Terizla and a Ruby. Like, you're not getting behind those heroes. You're not getting onto the backside. You have to face those two things in front. And, you know, Midnight is able to kind of build a draft around what BTK is so good at. And, you know, they're shining right now. It's very convincing that the draft fits with their style. The coaching is helping out CC ben. all the members. It's not a, you know, Moba Zane show no more. You know, First pick, um... Really like Whole world, Nicolette, Milo, so much impact. Maybe Navario. Oh, Barats could be a first pickable here. Shine anymore on or Fred, but that's just a trade. Just because the games are just uh, so hey, Minnow. So early, he's getting you know some good kind of hard to say. Yeah, it was actually good at drafting, I could predict it, but I don't know what they're gonna do. You know, Cole World always in the front of engaging. BTK is oh, there's a Minnow strong team right now. Crash chicken sweep. Thank you. And gotten, uh, I want to say, I, I, I don't know how to say, but like his, his uh, mentality, maybe the way he style. approaches the XP lane. Yeah, his style for this, and uh, he's always kind of seen it as the XP laner. Uh, their primary role, Bleh. especially in the early game, Bleh. they set the tempo for a lot of objectives. It's on mm. the XP laner, and he takes that whole pressure on. When it used to be the Terizla pick, he would kind of come in with that penalty zone, <coughs> seeing it as he front lines with. Wow, the dude, that's like that all through games, though. Well. But he, he, his, his style there is to kind of be the front line. He is the one that kind of carries the the BTK through a lot of these objectives, especially in the early to mid game. Alfred, the big thing as it starts getting more into the late game. Uh, like our brats here, no? That's when you have your marksman starting to get fed up there. That's when you have your mage starting to get more and more damage. Uh, but he's been executing here to perfection. Here we've talked about him, uh, especially in the first two games. Here, I do like this pick. Devious activity, some CC, <sighs> some tankiness, a front line. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> uh, but the opening from BTK is... It's so convincing already. It is still a little bit kind of like that old school style that we've seen. Valentina, Fredrin, right? You know, it, it gets a little bit old, but it is still 
Just one of the um, red trees in the jungle. Navario. Okay. Valentino, Fine. I am to take I'm not like paying attention much to the draft. So, I'm all spacing out. DA's first three picks have been pretty good. The these last few games, now, all the games, it's just the second phase. They really just pick some dumb shit. So let's see what they do here. If I was DA, you ban. And a crazy Kaja for sure, because they pick carry. They go Kaja carry combo. I'd say like Kaja Ruby, and then pick whatever gold you can. They don't have the last XP pick, but there isn't really any hard XP matchups here. So like any XP is fine. Grok, okay, Grok Kaja. Please don't forget to ban the Kaja. Like if you don't ban Kaja, you're trolling. <laughs> very first game he maybe died once or twice at most didn't take too much damage so this definitely does prolong the game a little bit but btk's drop here so far is just very counter towards uh the front line heavy that devious has even with the cc that they provided the carry is just so extremely smart here private I was gonna get a little worried for devious activity because they hadn't picked the marksman. I was like, man, if all answers <laughs> point to Ixia again, like, they could go Harris. I'm gonna be very upset. But BTK, they're like, you know, what? Show us something different. Hmm. We'll help you out. Oh. You don't want the Ixia here. Uh, they're gonna go ahead and take out the Roger pick as well. Something interesting from devious activity. They're gonna uh, take out the Uranus pick here. Uh, possibly I looking. Hey, DJ, for, BTK shows, but Kaja. Uh, they don't have the CC out there anymore. Uh, well, they, they don't have to go Kaja. It just works really well. They might wait till last pick for the xp the or xp well, or roam uh i think xp should get last pick actually uh, we'll see what we got uh, so far a promising draft from devious activity uh we're still gonna be uh, waiting for uh we still get physical damage from them uh we're still looking for um i guess that XP why is he as a well. pretty good back line dive uh black dragon uh, now the side of bt and be oh interesting they go kaja for sure bro mm -hmm. How do we just fuck Hanabi? But here we go. So the Hanabi is very, very So the thing is now DA is very late game. Deal with a lot going Hanabi with Navaria. Very uh you know very interesting. Or uh Akai or uh even the Tigger. Angela's banned. BTK like first three banned Angela. She is not good at He needs to go like a damage XP. They don't have enough damage and they already have like a tank jungle. He needs to go an XP that can do some damage. Perfect combination. Kaja with the Valentina. Very, very <coughs> solid uh early game that you know yeah Mel loves playing Hanabi and Hanabi's not bad it's just very late game oriented it's actually pretty good for Yuzong because Yuzong can't like melt her through her shields Terizla bro that's not a good pick that's not a good pick at all here man Terizla's awful I would say you should have went like Pack or Bene the reason why Terizla's bad here is because they have carry it's like you just counterpicked yourself like late game you already want to play for late game right and you have Hanabi Navario. So you could argue that, okay, he's going Terizzle, so he's a strong early game. But at the same time, it's going to be like, you're just double fucked late game. So hard to say. But yeah, like Kaja is very obvious. So I'm amazed they didn't ban Kaja if they wanted to go for the Hanabi. That's just like your number one counter. Dude, it's always a second phase picks with DA. The first three looks so solid. There's a second phase, and it's like, what the fuck is this? Very to that point is they very interesting bro the hanabi with an with angela, angela on the team so you had a heart guard uh if you know about hanabi uh hanabi when she has a now btk is the strong uh, they're actually really, really strong early game and late game uh, look at their comp so she's gonna be able they have the yuzong fredrin for first turtle and then they have like carry kaja valley game who has a flask of the oasis da just seems like unless brats unless they like like again like a snowball even if you have a bad comp if you win early it doesn't matter because you can just snowball out snowball but if you have a late game comp and you lose early it's really bad <laughs> they getting gap to draft so much for to solve yeah the, the idea is getting like draft gapped every single second phase it's kind of crazy bro that they can bring in that hanabi you're really expecting her to be able to do a lot of damage for a long time because you're a lot you're expecting that shield pretty jover chat pretty jover other marksmen they do just a lot more damage uh i would be amazed if da can win this game because not only is their mental broken but like their comps like very questionable for their chances in the upper bracket here this is game point for the bloodthirsty kings is is btk playing like a 4d chess here because <clears throat> the kaja and the carry 
perfect synergy, right? The Hanavi, oh, you know, the side of DA, a lot of the drafts that they do, especially going up against BTK, it's just a little bit awkward, right? Uh, common emblems for both the carry and the Kaja uh, tank for the Fredrin, quite standard <coughs> here for uh, both of these. Yeah, teams. DA actually wins uh, this fight here because Barats is at 10 stacks. You cannot invade a Barats early game. His Barats 10 stacks will just clap you. Again, I, I so that invade will not go off. Cole will force the flicker. Uh, yeah, like I'm not sure if it's worth it, honestly, because your first flicker at turtle is so important as Terizla. If you want to flicker ult engage, like you could just say, oh, it's a one for one flicker trade, but I don't really see it the same. I think it's kind of a losing trade for DA there. But you know, they didn't get invaded this game, so that's something. The, the Terizla. I, I, I think that's good news for the side of DA, right? Like, if they're able to get some some pickoffs early, some flickers traded here and there, it, it definitely shines a, a little bit of moment of greatness, and I think that's what Devious needs, right? A little bit now, as for his first turtle, definitely BTK's favor when you have the Yuzong. The only way I see DA winning the fight is if Kush can retrogap, and then Bodge has ults. That's like the only way I see it happening. When you take a look at the the Rome matchups, right? The Minotaur and the Kaja. I think Barraz will definitely to counter the Kaja. be very tanky here. Actually stands out ahead Ooh. In terms of this they lose this fight. You it should give. Depends on how they can execute this Unless he eats him right now. And immediately after dropping okay, nice. Actually huge. His middle has ult now. Oh, wow. Dia Stomp. Melon's here as well for some reason. Holy shit, the Hanavi going crazy. But Bob should not have gotten that kill, but still actually insane from DA. It, like, can I not can I not say it's any more perfect chat? I literally said the only way DA would win is like this, and it happened. Like yeah, here we go, private. Literally called it, bro. I said Kush has to win the retry, Bodge gets ult, ult win the fight. Matches so well with what they are drafting up against, right? A little bit of a gold lead for their jungler for their XP, pretty much. Everyone but the thing is, two of the kills onto middle, which is really bad. You don't want kills being on your roamer, right? The, the mage, the XP, and the jungler. So, some good but like, news, good trades for the side of DA. BTK do have Kaja carry, and someone is going to get caught up later. Though. I don't think carry Kaja can melt anyone else right now for a bit. He's actually clapping Milo and one. Which is kind of surprising. Eh, not really. You got the healing back. Ain't gonna do much there now. But hey, DA got the leap drones early game. Your dog, bro. You heard my dog barking. Now, they know Barats is bot side, so they're gonna try for a top side play. DA need to play super far back now. Because Kaja can just flicker ult anyone, and they'll probably die because carries there. <laughs> Bud should not be this far up, bro. I don't. Uh, he's not gonna die. Actually, he will die. Maybe. Oh yeah, he's gonna die. Okay, he wasn't gonna die there if he got his ult off, but he didn't get his ult off. Oh my god. He got solo killed. What the hell happened? Yato is gonna live barely though. One HP. Now, I don't. How is this gonna play out here? Melon's getting fucked right now already. But he actually went full HP still. I guess did he Aegis? Yeah, he did Aegis. So this turtle fight is actually an advantage for DA because it's a five v five and they're they overall have the lead right now. Most likely, even with the so it seems like BTK knows that and they're gonna give up. Like Zane's only half HP, they have to give it up. Melon though, not in a great spot. He can't go that deep. Melon needs help, bro. This is bad. Yeah, I don't know why he keeps trying to force going through this way. Okay, now he's fine because is here. But they did kind of lose that lead they had. It's only close to 1k now. I don't know how T died solo bot. What happened there? <laughs> did he try greeting, trying to kill Milo on one things like the joy barge like the Terizla. so it's gonna be a hard decision for milo to make and i think that oh good poke gonna make the difference apple here. with the middle if he's able to choose correctly and get the pick offs that he that top star might be gone on the other hand i think da they're relatively no. melon the is kind of forcing the they, they no, the double lane a lot here kind of full send forward kind of too much get, you know cold world because he's just gonna lose his top tower if he forces it again him. have the counter set from joy Baj, and then the rest of the members kind of follow up so DA, honestly, they have what it takes to be able to push through in this game, but a lot of the history... The DA doesn't even have to, like, snowball. They just need to go late game. And although it is hard to play late game versus the Kaja too, they are so much stronger late game than they are early game. But, like, the fact they aren't doing anything with their lead is kind of, like, disappointing, too. 
Like, they're trying to let BTK make the plays, and they're not looking for plays themselves. They're terrified of the Kaja. We bring up the items, but I wanted to touch on the thing you were saying. I think the obvious answer is that the Black Dragon goes to zone out Yato. You have an answer in Cold World to possibly take down Melon uh, on the other side. I guess they're just waiting for Next Turtle to fight it out. Use the Black Dragon to go for Melon. You're not only are you competing with uh, the front line. You all can't do shit to Hanby if Hanby has Aegis. Aegis, who's gonna have shield, who's, who you can't petrify. Unless you have Hunter Strike, you won't do enough damage, and then she'll just like kill you. You could zone a Hanabi, but he cannot kill a Hanabi. The later the, the later the game gets, the worse it is. Outside your reach. At this point, it's already like really hard. If anything, Yuzong should just focus on Varya. He might go for like Kush. Which, uh, I think here it's like you focus the Navaria as you zone, or the, you can go on hand to be sure, but you're not going to kill her. But it's still better than like going on anyone else. We're looking at 5v5 here, Melon is doing some risky pathing here. Conceal went off. He's really deep here. Kush wins the Retri. Gets ulted though. 5v5 here. I don't think they're going to win the fight. Bonge with the flicker ult engage, but is going to miss. Yato will get the kill. Bonge got another kill, man. What the hell? <laughs> Wait, they're still fighting. This is a bad fight. Yeah, they're backing off. Okay, it's just another even trade. It was like, it was like a one for one, but they got turtle. Not really a full even trade, but a trade regardless. Actually, a winning trade for DA, but the goalie very is kind of the same. Nothing really changed there. <laughs> Good retry from Kush. Melon's got to back off a little bit there, man. Now, late game, it's going to be either Cold World gets Hanabi or they lose. That's how late game is. There is no other way they can play it around to where it's entirely dependent on Cold World. DA have a lot more room to play with though, with like you got Brat's ult, you got Turtles ult, you have Hanabi ult, you have Middle ult. Like all it can like start a fight. DA or BTK only really have Milo to engage with the Petri and then Cold World. It's hard for Zane to engage because like Brat's can just eat him or for our Miller's ults. Both like, you know, anti CC. Uh, wow. Wait, Cold World just ulted Brat's. Interesting. Milo is very deep. He Petri's on Kush, which isn't the right play because you don't have carry here. You're not going to do enough damage. Bodge with a little bit of an early ult. Kind of a bad ult there. It was only Fredrin there. It's just going to be an exchange of ults. An opportunity there, but uh, I want to say devious activity. The difference, right BTK, now like, is they're playing it smart by having to carry Kaja to go splits because DA doesn't have a split, they don't have a hard split. It's just gonna be like either they what they should be doing is matching, like Minnow Minnow Hanabi should be matching the split push with like Kaja carry because Turza can't, Turza gets fucked by the carry. But there's a fight going on and they're not showing it. Oh, wait, no, it's not a fight. Never mind. Oh, they're doing a replay like the old fights. You know, it's a little bit out of look at bar right now. You see T is like matching the, the carry basic. It's not going to go well for T. I don't know if they can like one shot him completely. Okay, actually, Kaja doesn't have ult right now, so it's fine. What they should, what DA should be doing right now is pressuring Lord because you know Kaja carry are bots. So why aren't you hitting Lord right now? Much more favorable in our position are guaranteed, right? They're just gonna full commit to Lord and Kaja and Kara will be late. All they need to do now is just eat Zane. That's potentially in their favor, and it does look like they're looking for it. Yeah, they're gonna be able to Oh wow, that knockup was crazy. Zane gets it. Melon can't do shit, he's dead. I don't know how Kush lost that retry. Can you not ult? Can you not retry during Barat's ult? That's really bad. Now all of a sudden, BTK have a 2k lead. Oh, it was the middle ult from Apple that knocked them up. Ah. He didn't retro at all? Oh, he didn't retro? He can rets? Oh. I guess that was just unfortunate. That was just his timing, though. It was a really good ult from Apple, the middle ult there, because she timed it to where the Bratz ult would finish, and then he got knocked up. The Bonk got Lord? Oh. I, think, no, I swear Zane's still retreat, no? That's a big Bonk right there, though. Or quite low. 
Bodge. Yeah, you can see doing here. Kush, one HP, big bonk. Not gonna hit. Isn't gonna kill. Wait. I don't know why Bodge just went back in. Bodge just killed himself. Oh no, he's alive. This is so weird. <laughs> Everyone is like one HP and re-engaging still. How do you not get that? Yeah, actually, I actually just don't know how Kush did not retry that one. Like, he got the first two retries on the first two turtles, which were like, oh, I didn't expect him to get those, because he was, like, down in numbers. And then the moment it's just Zane alone, and then Kush is there, they lose it. It's actually hilarious. It, it, it looked good. It, you know, the fight from DA that, that, that they had it set up, it was like a two versus four on the Lord that Hobby was Now BTK has the momentum. But, no high grounds are down yet, but like, DA has no outer turrets. BTK has all the outer turrets. Oh, they have like only one outer turret. Oh, it's a big... Oh, it's Kush is quite low. Big bonk, but he's gonna dash out. Conceal goes off. T very deep here. Melon is not going to... Be... Okay, Melon's just saying, fuck my team. He's gonna run, bro. Oh, Melon gets flicker ulted. Melon's dead. This is GG. Ha! The moment Melon walked back to try and fight, it was already over. <laughs> Yeah, the Probably GG. Botch the, the, the has ults. I don't think that's enough though. Cole will have ults as well. That's way too early of a second skill. Nope, GG. Uh, unless... Nope, GG. Yep. GG! Next week, Weaver's BTK. Finals. Should be interesting. What was this? 21 minutes, and then we had a 10 minute 30 Cushable. <laughs> this time around, another short game I will not be playing RG. Guys, I just wanted to watch part of this, because I was going to watch it anyway. So, I will be heading out now. Not tomorrow? Nope, next week. Next week, we will play. Not tomorrow. BTK, but, you know, honestly, DA in their last match... They did make some changes. They no interview? Bro, why would I watch the interview? <laughs> I think I give a shit. I want to go play like other games. I was I told my friends I'd play with them. Some Sea of Thieves after. Uh, sense. So, I will see you all tomorrow. I will stream. Thank you for watching. Like the stream. Sub as well. All that good stuff. I'll see you all later. Bye.